All right, hello accountants. Um, welcome back. Today we're going to be going over assignment five, um, posting journal entries to the general ledger account. I have divided this assignment up into three part videos just because I um, didn't want the video file sizes to get really huge if I went on too long. So I have them divided up into three different videos so make sure you catch each video for the different sections of the assignment. Um, okay, so to start off with, this first part is going to be a lot like the last couple of assignments that you've done. So we're going to copy transactions over into our journal. And then in part two, we'll be copying those journal entries over into our general ledger account. And then in part three, we'll be um, taking the balances from our general ledger accounts and proving them in a trial balance form. So that'll be... Um, in part three of uh, these videos. So here's part one and we're going to talk about um, what we've been doing the last few assignments looking at transactions and copying them, to, copying them into our journal. So here's again is our list of accounts that we get to use. Okay so I don't want to see you just using um, cash or assets or um, liability. Okay you're naming your accounts based on what account name you're given. Okay, so make sure you refer to that list of accounts. Alright, the first one in your template I have done for you, but let's just go over it to make sure everyone's on the same page. On January 1st, Rex invested $5,000 into his business. This was recorded on memo number 10. So the step one, we're still going through all the steps to analyze our transactions. Um, in step one, the accounts affected in this transaction is going to be capital stock because we're investing money into our business and also cash because, again, we're investing um, cash into our business. Okay, This $5,000 came out of Rex's personal savings account, so we don't deduct it or anything because we're only worried about business accounts. So that $5,000 is going to increase our capital stock and our cash. So capital stock is an owner's equity account. Okay, so we're um, just detailing what type of accounts these are. Cash is an asset account. Some of you make the mistake of saying cash is a cash account. Okay, cash falls under our assets. Okay, cash is something we own, so it's an asset. And in this transaction, Rex's capital is going to increase by $5,000 and his cash is also going to increase by $5,000. So now let's look at our debit and credit rule. An increase in cash is going to be recorded as a debit, so we're going to debit cash for $5,000. An increase in capital stock, or owner's equity, is recorded as a credit. So we are going to credit Rex's capital for $5,000. So then we go down to our T accounts. You guys have done this before. Um, we look at our cash account first, and since that is an asset account, our debit side is going to increase, and our credit side will decrease. And over here on Rex's capital account, owner's equity, our debit is our decrease side, and our increase side is our credit column. If you guys are confused at all about these increases and decreases, I really suggest you go into our announcements and watch that debit credit uh, video that I posted in there because it really does a good job of explaining kind of the rules of um, debits and credits and increase and decrease. So with our cash account we are increasing by we said five thousand dollars and Rex's capital is also increasing by five thousand dollars. Okay. And just like we've, we've done before copying this transaction over into our journal this transaction happened on January 1st, so we put in our date. Description, we always list our debit first. So we're putting our cash of 5000 in first, and then we want to list our capital. Remember, we want to indent when we're listing our credit transaction. So we have Rex's capital, and it's increasing in credit for 5000 Okay, so there's transaction one. And with that, transaction two, Rex transferred 
furniture valued at $2,000 to the business. And this was recorded on Memo 11, which reminds me, we had a Memo 10 up here that I forgot to record, so we want to make sure that we record our documentation, which is on the following line. Um, so we say Memo, let's put the number sign 10. Okay, just a reminder to you, you have documentation for this transaction. Okay, back to transaction two. So we transferred furniture, his own personal furniture, because it doesn't say he took it out of any other account. He just transferred furniture in, and it was valued at $2,000. Okay, and this is written on memo 11. So the accounts that it's going to be affected are, obviously, um, our furniture account. And let's see if we have a specific account name for that. Office furniture. Okay, so we're going to name this account Office Furniture. And then we also, um, we've brought in furniture that's valued at $2,000, brought it um, into our business, so that's going to increase our overall business's value, so our um, owner's equity would also increase. And our owner's equity is called Rex's capital, like it was on the first transaction. Okay? You guys understand that our value increased by 2000 so our capital is increasing by 2000 not cash, because we brought it in as furniture, not cash. Okay, next step would be to um, describe whether these are asset accounts or owner's equity or li liability, um, just describing the type of account. So our office furniture account is an asset account, because it's what we owe. Um, Rex's capital, actually I think it's supposed to be called, yep, okay, Rex's capital. So we have, sorry, hope I didn't make emotion sickness there. So we have Rex's capital is an owner's equity account. So we've described what type of, what type of accounts we're working with. And then the next step is to say okay, our office furniture is going to increase. We've added in that value. And then our excess capital is also going to increase because, again, we've brought in that $2,000 value. Our increase in assets is recorded as a debit. So we will debit office furniture for $2,000 and then owner's equity increase recorded as a credit. So we will credit excess capital for $2,000. Okay, copy that transaction to our T account. Account name, we have office furniture. And if that bugs you, you can always drag these out a little bit. And we also have Rex's Capital. Our office furniture is an asset account, so we're increasing on the debit side, decreasing on the credit side. Rex's Capital is owner's equity account, so we're decreasing on the debit side, increasing on our credit side. Again, check out my credit and debit secrets video that I posted in the announcements for explanations on increase and decrease. Um, okay, so we're increasing. We said we are increasing our office furniture for 2000 And we are also increasing or crediting Rex's capital for 2000 So we copy that transaction over to our journal. It took place on January 3rd. We always want to list our debit first for 2000 and then we have indented Rex's capital for 2000 Okay, so you guys should have a good feel for this by now. Um, we've done the past two assignments were exactly like this with creating our T accounts and then copying them over to our general journal. 
And then always remember to record our documentation. So this was memo number 11. And that is part one of this assignment.